Hi there, welcome back to the podcast of Wednesday's Child. This is where we get to talk about all things eating disorders. Those of you that are on a journey to recovery and want to hear some advice and share some insights, this is the place to be. And I'm joined today by my co-host, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, Kenny, thank you. I've got summer clothes on and a winter weather outside my window. So, you know, I'm a little bit, I've got it wrong this morning. Oh my goodness, I don't know whether to make you feel really, really jealous. But so I am speaking to you from a very, very warm and sunny, she said, staring out the window, uh, mon- Monday morning in East Anglia. And I hear it's going to get up to something like 24 this week. I don't know if I just kind of made that up, but um, yeah. That would be lovely. Well, I'm going to Nottingham with work this afternoon, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll follow some sunshine because it's just oh, cloudy and cold here. Oh, and do you know what? I'm I'm so so jealous. So, um, my uh, sort of pair of my best friends um have just got married over in Rhodes. Uh, they got married a uh, week today actually. They got ah. married last Monday, and they sent the most adorable wedding picture. And I know they're going to be back later in the week, so I'm going to catch up with them for a meal. And I'm just. I just wanted a little bit of sun before they came back because they've spent two weeks away and I know they're going to look like bronze god and goddesses. So you're thinking, oh, please let me not look quite so pasty when they get out. Oh, hey, Debbie, I could spend a week on the sun itself and I would never look like a bronze goddess with my uh, Viking skin. So embrace it. Embrace the whiteness. (laughs) <laughs> actually do you know what I, I mean I know we haven't done a, a podcast episode for a couple of weeks and we were going to keep this a quite a general topic so that we could catch up with our audience and share a few thoughts and feelings but one of those kind of hits on that you know the summertime so being out in the sunshine enjoying a summertime and fully embracing it I'd really like love your thoughts on are we steering into that period that so many of us get particularly when we're in recovery and we're kind of aware sunnier weather is coming so body's changing and or, or like expectation about what we're going to wear is changing. And then on top of that, and I don't know whether it's just me and I kind of notice these things, but the number of newspapers and magazines that want to tell us that you can have that beach body in six weeks or six days. If you only do this, that and the other, I t- oh, it just it makes me so frustrated. But I suppose the great bit about being better and and not entrenched in the eating disorders when you can look at it and you can be a bit bloody annoyed but you're not drawn into it and think oh got to follow this oh well this diet plan says I must do that and at my uh, my social media scrolls at the moment are just jam-packed full of people trying to sell me some sort of plan it was a blood type one the other day and then I'm going to met up met, I can't even say it metabolic uh, plan the day before that and um oh, and then I'm, because I'm of a certain age Debbie uh, you might be the same as well it's constant you know at, at your age you couldn't possibly do anything without being on these diets and these it drives me absolutely insane and I think for me it, it, it's that constant need to do that piece of work with the voice in your head about acceptance and yeah. kindness and compassion and um and being really like true to your values and it's it, it does I, th- I, th- I do think this time of year anyone that's had any kind of form of, of formative and, and kind of real therapy it's this sort of time of year for me where it, it really is handy to get it back out of your toolkit and just just have it playing around in your head yeah it's a good time to do that sort of temperature check of where am I how's my brain feeling how much am I listening to myself how much am I either committing to food or exercise or just general well-being in an intuitive and sensible way and have I come in any way off course I think yeah you're right it it does it comes up for a reason sometimes these things don't they in life almost these little temporary challenges or just reminders to say where are you what have you got to keep keep being sure is happening and even more so when we know that even if we're doing really well and we can ignore all that clap drop and the, you know, buy this diet pill and follow this regime, if we can ignore it, we know damn well that that colleague sitting to the left of us and that friend that's over the road from us, they're going to get drawn into it and tempted by the thought that if only they lose two pounds more, they'll have that perfect beach body in time for their holiday. And we know it's rubbish. We do know it's rubbish. But in the moment when you're feeling like that, it feels very, very real and it can feel very lonely and very isolating. And and I think that's why we should never be afraid to to keep going back to certain things and get getting, you know, the, the, the correct books out or the correct podcasts like this one um, out and just 
just giving yourself a pat on the back for where you've come, a pat on the back for the way in which you're thinking about things differently, but, but a real reflection on the fact that this, this stuff is real and it is coming up. And we can't help, you know, when, when you're bombarded with people telling you to buy a diet, it doesn't take long before your brain goes, oh, maybe I need to. So <laughs> just, just reminding yourself of, of the, the, the journey you've been on and the things you've learned in your recovery. I mean, the classic example, Debbie, is I've just got back from Paris with Amy. Now, if you, any listener remembers, that was my recovery pledge to myself back in 2019, was that we were going to go and see the lady with a magic smile, but we were going to go without packing anorexia in the journey. And we did it. And how did you find it? So one, it must have been just amazing to have that mother-daughter time away, but also to know that there was a reason you created that bucket list. And here was something very, very significant on there. You'd reached the point that you could safely go away, that you felt right to do it, that your husband felt right to do it. In fact, you were probably ready to do it before the pandemic. But, you know, life being what it is, you Mm -hmm. finally got to do it in 2022. And just, yeah, how did it go for you both? I almost purposefully on an evening when we by when I was by ourselves, obviously we were sharing a bed because our apartment was the smallest match matchbox size apartment ever. Um, while Amy started to snore, I purposely kind of made myself think back to that pledge I made to Dr. Katie when I was on the ward, that that was what I was going to do to to keep reminding myself that like there is no pill to fix an eating disorder. It is sheer bloody determination and hard work. And it's the hardest thing that most of us would ever do. And it was so wonderful being laid in that bed every evening going, I did these 12 things today because of recovery. I did these 12 things today because of recovery, not because of money. Yes, you need money to get there. But I could have had all the money in the world if I hadn't had recovery and never would have been able to take Amy to Paris. Oh, I could have taken her, but anorexia would have been packed. So therefore, it was a totally different experience for us. We spent so much money on food, it was unreal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just not just because the cost of living is rising. It was because you decided to have the very things that you just hadn't allowed. Just so you. much, like all, all the carbs, all the carbs. I came home and I was at St. James, right, you know, I, I've met every single carb this holiday. It's been wonderful. Um, everything possible. Walk it. You, you, when you're going to city break, you have to walk a lot. So that that does trigger or something, you know, for lots of people. But actually, you're supposed to walk when you're going to city break. But you're also supposed to have all the carbs whilst you're walking. You know, so it's like that. You're, you're sort of living that existence and you experience things actually as things like treats, like holidays, should be experienced. A holiday is not something that you should batter yourself at the gym at before you go and then not dare relax because that beach body that you've worked so hard for after a day or two of eating all the carbs are gonna might potentially come unbalanced a holiday is supposed to be about total relaxation and or total adventure whatever it is that you're pitching yourself um and it's just it get we had we had a wonderful week an absolutely wonderful week and i wouldn't wouldn't have replaced it for anything in the world oh that's so important isn't it and I, I think if anybody is in that stage of trying to remind themselves what would recovery look like and what is it that I need to get to I think it is to reach a point in your life where you are able to be fully present for those experiences because frankly you know that James could have organized for you and Amy to go to Paris in the middle of you being poorly and you would have walked around, not noticed half the sights and the sounds. You would have been miserable. You'd have been tired. You'd have not coped with the very well, very well with the fact that your apartment was really tiny and then you were really cross about it and that you didn't have the perfect place to sit and eat your food and that you could only get certain carbs at certain restaurants for certain amounts of money. You, everything could have been done, but the experience would have been altogether different. If there was a real, like, absolute perfect example of that when we went outside the Sacre Coeur in La Montmartre sorry anyone who's French my accent and my, my French I tell you I did all right though my GCC French came back it was quite I was quite did impressed it, did, with this, myself. did you have to say Oué le Piscine or did you no not I did not I didn't manage to I didn't need to tell anyone what, what was in my pencil case either uh, but I did I did have to order the odd you know beverage here and there but we were stood at it, like the Sacre Coeur is obviously on the top of a, of a like a, of a hill and we we got the metro and we came out and there was the stairs to get up to the to the cathedral lots of stairs very very steep it was a very hot day or there was like the chairlift funicular and I, we just went to the funicular because of course you would because it was 25 degrees there was 
a couple of hundred stairs and they're really really steep so we went to the chairlift and actually when we got on there I did chuckle to myself thinking blimey three or four years ago I'd have been dragging Amy up those stairs she'd have been like I don't want I don't want to I want to go on the chairlift but I'd have been dragging her up so that was for me a a real real important what you just said there you can show up and you can do stuff when you are poorly but you're going to make choices for your mental illness rather than for your enjoyment does that make sense yeah absolutely it does and I I really hope anybody that's in that space at the minute and has maybe booked a holiday for this summer because we know that for a lot of people they haven't got away in the last couple of years so this is probably a year where lots of people will be getting away you know for the first time for some some period I just say you know think about what Sarah's just said there and think about making it an experience that you want to look back on for all the right reasons and that doesn't involve torturing yourself in a gym or walking for hours and miles previously to get yourself into some kind of beaten up shape before you go. And it doesn't involve restricting and reducing <coughs> things that you get to enjoy. Oh, hello, dog. Have you been have you been joined by someone in the room, Sarah? I've got my two spaniels hiding in the room with me, and the doorbell's <gasps> just gone. Oh, <laughs> I do no. apologise. <laughs> all right they just wanted to be part of the podcast so yeah absolutely I think if you are at the point of um booking yourself onto a holiday or you're imminently about to go just really reflect what is it you actually want because if you want to go and have a miserable experience then crack on and do all those things that just in the run-up to going on a holiday make life you know pretty damn miserable carry on you do that but you're not going to get the level of holiday and experience that most of us desire to have from the vacations that we choose to have in life so yeah maybe maybe think about that and it's also I think it's important isn't it that you know we perfectionism is something that's spoken quite a lot to do with eating disorders I'm always on a limb as to whether I experience perfectionism and or not but um you don't you also don't have to go on holiday just because it's the summer you know you, you we said earlier didn't we you know things are tight for folks I'd, I'd saved up for a long time to go to Paris for Amy that's my holiday there's that you don't but you but you can still be having a holiday away from all the other rubbish that's going on in your head you can still be doing that in your own back garden on your balcony in your front room taking your nana out whatever it is it's reminding ourselves that our lives don't need to be that insta perfect world where everybody's in Mauritius drinking cocktails and and that is so important I went to see a friend this weekend and you know I I won't name her but she wouldn't mind me saying at all not that I'm sure she's like don't think she does anything by way of listening to us but she has actually deleted Instagram off her um off her phone because she said for whatever reason she got caught up in the world over the royal jubilee weekend of just looking at friends pictures of either street parties or lovely jubilee tea parties they were having with their children in their back garden or special things that they were doing on the mall in London because they could afford to do so and she said, you know, for a while there, I just got caught up in looking at that because I couldn't have afforded to have gone to the London celebrations. I didn't have a partner to do anything special with on those four long days off work. And, you know, I wasn't throwing a street party because I didn't know all my neighbours really well. And for four days, and you know, Sarah, you're a bit like me, you're really committed to your work. And if you're somebody that is really committed to your work, and particularly if you have less going on in your private world, those four days can actually feel quite long, and quite lonely, if you allow your head to fill itself with negativity. And she just made the decision, oh my God, I'm using these four days just looking at Instagram and thinking that everybody's life is bloody perfect. And that, you know, everybody's got a world better than me. So she made this real conscious decision. She was just going to take it off her phone. And she said, I can't tell you like seven days on how much better I feel. It's not that I'm afraid to see people having happy experiences. It's just that I realized that in having it on my phone and being absorbed in it all the time, I was stopping myself be aware of what I needed to do in my life to create happy experiences of my own. So she just got more stuck into her gardening again and walking with her dog and meeting up with a friend who, like her, loves to go and walk down the beach really early in the morning with the dogs. And she did the very stuff that kind of just took her away from that stuff that we do for comparison and it you know we were both reflecting on that great quote comparison is the thief of all joy and it's just so true isn't it it's just really not helpful to any of us 
I think that's the one that gets going back to the beginning of this about this time of year. I think that's the difference between this time of year and any other season. Um, we seem to shove ourselves in that total comparison mode and comparison way of living. And um, it's just, what is it? What is it about people being able to be outdoors more that makes us suddenly feel inadequate or inferior if if our jeans aren't the right make or our trainees aren't quite clean enough or what? It's, it's a really strange, because you don't do it when you're in your wellies and you I don't walk past people in the cold thinking, ooh, your coat's posher than mine. But I know in the summer I do walk past and, and I'll, I'll immediately like, oh, wow, you're tall. Or, oh, blimey, you've got nice legs. Or it's like, it, it's really strange. Yeah, it is. Isn't it funny? And I wonder whether, did we do less of that? So was that one blessing of what we were going through in lockdown is that people actually weren't doing any of that comparative stuff? Because frankly, everybody was in the tracky bottoms at home so much. And you really didn't see people out and, out and about. And that, that's why I say all praise to anybody that really embraced that time as an opportunity to get well out of the eyes of judgment or, or perceived judgment of other people noticing you changing during yeah. your recovery. Because actually, sometimes it can feel easier to do it when we don't think others are seeing us. Yeah, yeah. So and we... we it, 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 it's a definite mindset shift, isn't it? And anything like that, where you, when you're thinking about comparison and or your progress in your recovery, that because we're told so often that, you know, small is beautiful and big is less so, you are going to change shape, but it's about how you become a butterfly rather than a, a caterpillar. You know, it, you, you were crawling along in your eating disorder and you were a bit gnarly because you're a bit pooly and then you go through recovery and actually you become this amazing thing that that is all and more than you ever could have imagined that it could have been but it doesn't mean it's going to like we've we always say that doesn't suddenly mean you're going to have the big house and the posh car and all that stuff because that doesn't change but what it does change is your own belief in yourself and your own belief of those people around you and the ability just to be be present and be in the moment I suppose yeah and I think one of the things that really helped me in recovery was that the recognizing that whatever I felt about myself even in the times when I was sort of having a blip in oh goodness weight changing or how I felt about myself any of that I had to keep reminding myself how was I perceived by other people because actually while we talk about like you know loss of control and gaining control and all that sort of thing in, in eating disorder recovery the one thing we start to gain lots more of as we move forward into our recovery and kind of way beyond that quasi stage is the recognition of the relationships that are improved and our ability to just be present, as you say, and to communicate with people. And one of the things that helped me was constantly thinking, okay, so I may have gained yet a bit more, sorry, I should say restored a bit more weight this week or this month or whatever, but hey, look in that four week period, look at the improvements that have happened in my life. Oh my God, you know, I'm no longer like really snappy with my family. Oh, I'm, I've now gone out five times in the last 15 days, you know, for spontaneous meals with people. I've not lied and I don't like being a liar. I don't make excuses. I don't let people down. I'm someone who's got the energy to stay up right the way through a film that finishes at midnight and not like feel like I want to crawl off my bed at eight o'clock. All those things that you gain by moving away from the rituals of your eating disorder. But sometimes we have to remind ourselves of what we're moving towards and what we're gaining by doing these changes. And, and it, when we really think about what it is that we spend time doing, right at the heart and center of everything that we do is food and you can't you, you can't get away from it so whatever whenever there's an event or a special occasion your friend's wedding in Rhodes a massive part of that planning and prep and everything that, that, that they did on their wet wedding would have been around whether you call it a wedding breakfast or a wedding lunch or whatever you call it um when Amy and I went to Paris, the first thing we did, we walked past the bakery that was opposite the apartment. And she was like, mom, 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 bakery's right there. So straight away, you're in like, you're in the mode where food is at the heart and center of everything that we do for pleasure. Yeah. So the second that that becomes an issue, you've just stripped that entire heart and center out of anything that you're doing pleasurable. Um, so once you start, like you said there, once you start to grow into it and you reflect on that journey, actually what happens is you start to be able to be full 
front and center in that heart of what it makes events pleasurable and it is food you know you go and see your mom and dad you've not seen them for a while what does your mom do she makes your sons a dinner she puts the kettle on she makes your date and walnut cake you go and visit your mother-in-law what does she do oh she's got the brownies out because that's about that nurturing and that care that they want because they want you to feel loved and we show love often through food so allow have it allow people to show you their love by accepting their food and accept the fact that food is right in the heart and center of everything we do that's good and joyful yeah. and actually i defy anybody to think about some of those occasions in life that aren't centered on you know love and and happy times and things that don't feature somewhere along the line an element of feasting together that that's you know i mean it's biblical isn't it it's the breaking bread it's what we've been doing since the dawn of time and not only is it nurturing and evidence of love to be giving food to someone, but actually it's about being gracious in the receipt of, a bit yeah. like the kind of gift giving at Christmas. You know, I often think we have to think that we might like to give presents to people, but actually for them, it's there's a joy, isn't there, in being able to do something for someone. And I think, you know, when you go to your mum or your mother-in-law for that Sunday lunch there's a joy in seeing a recovered healthy happy Sarah sitting around the table receiving that meal and everything that that represents and it, it, you're making me chuckle there because we all have that auntie or that uncle don't we that buys crap presents <laughs> and you're, you're sat in your car with your mum or whatever when you were a kid I can see it right now my mum's saying right just just be thankful <laughs> like you know, I stuff an auntie that would give you like a dishcloth at age of five and you'd be like that oh auntie thank you so much for my dishcloth and she would love it she would love the fact that we're thankful we'd get in the car me and my sister would be absolutely killing ourselves laughing but but you're dead right it, it, it's making sure that yeah you're able to receive something as well as you're able to to give and to offer something back in return so with the lesson for today if you listen to this and wanting to evidence to your friends and family that you are really committed carrying on today and to pushing through with your recovery beyond quasi and you really are embracing it fully truly to be present with them think about how it lands for them to see you joyfully eating food and sharing a meal sharing a snack sharing in time with them being really present well I think we've come pretty much sort of full circle on this episode nice little chat about weddings and summer and holidays and also being respectful respectful of oneself i'm gonna say that's it for this episode thanks ever so much for listening we are always up for your topics and suggestions for what we might talk about and i, I want to do a bit of a post bag session i don't know if you're up for that sarah next time i think what we'll do is we'll answer lots of questions so we get them all the time so particularly those of you that want to share, you know, that you've maybe heard an episode that resonates with you or that you want to just tell us how you're doing in recovery and that you've just made it out of impatient or whatever it might be. Please share those emails with us. And if you're happy to, we're, we're going to um, read out a few questions and respond to those in our next episode. Thanks again for listening. That's been the Wednesday's Child podcast and we will see you again soon. <laughs>